love lives here. So, uh, this year here at Centers for Spiritual Living Worldwide, we are working with the theme of timeless wisdom, evolutionary vision. And the month of March, we are looking at and exploring the theme of open to possibilities with a focus on our visioning practice, our practice of visioning. And today we are looking at the topic of with open arms. And no, we are not talking about the journey song by the same title, Open Arms. So no, that's not what we're talking about today. But what we are focusing on is we are focusing on when we are catching the vision, we understand that the vision already is, it already exists. That in the mind of God and the mind of the divine, the vision, the high idea for our lives, the high idea for our center, the high idea for whatever it is that we are visioning for, the high idea already exists. That there is nothing that we need to do to make that happen. In fact, we do not manifest the vision, but the, vi the vision itself is fulfilled through us. And so when we catch the high idea of the vision, then the next thing that we do as we then become to we come to attune ourselves with it we come to align ourselves with it in our spanish speaking communities visioning the word that is used to describe the process or the word that is used is the name of the process is sintonization sintonization and what sintonization means is it means attunement so that's really what it is is we are attuning ourselves we are aligning ourselves think of it like a a radio dial back in the day when you actually had to turn the dial rather than just push a button and then it automatically moved there. But when you had to fine tune it in order to get the clear message, in order to come into alignment with the signals that are constantly being broadcast, that are constantly in the air, and we align ourselves with it, we attune ourselves with it, and then we can experience the clarity, we can hear the clarity, we can enjoy the music, whatever music is that we wish to uh, experience, because it's all available to us. So in the process of visioning, we catch that high idea, then we attune ourselves to it. The ways that we begin to attune ourselves to it, we talked about one of the first way last week is we talked about release, releasing and letting go, releasing the things that no longer serve us, releasing the attachments, releasing the idea of detachment and entering into a practice of non-attachment, non-attachment being uh, opening to curiosity and wonder without specific attachment to the preconceived ideas that we may have or attachment to those treasured wounds that we hold so sacred and so dear that we release all of that. <clears throat> we release the limiting beliefs. We release the, the limiting perspectives. We release the habits and behaviors that are pre preventing us from aligning with the high idea. So that was a recap of last week. So the first thing is we're looking to release because when we release something, we create that spaciousness for spirit to then rush in and fill that space. We create that opportunity, that spaciousness, that ah, gracious place of love where spirit just flows right in. And so that's where we are today. So with open arms, we are opening our arms to that spaciousness. We are opening our arms. And so we ask the questions then of what must I embrace for this high idea to be fulfilled through me? What must I embody for this high idea to emerge, to come forth into this plane of existence? And what must I become? What must I become so that the I am living the vision, I am living the high idea of my life or as a community, the high idea of our community. What must I or what must we become? So these are the questions that we are looking at. Last week we looked at what must I release, what must I let go of. This week we're looking at these three questions. So let's start with the first one, embrace. When we look at embracing, when we think of embracing something, we are extending our arms, yes, we are extending our arms 
and then we are drawing something closer to us. We are embracing it. So think of hugging somebody you love dearly, right? First, you open your arms to receive them, and then you envelop them in your embrace. You bring them in. You bring them closer. So the very nature of embracing is first there is a willingness. There is an openness. There is a receptivity, if you will, <clears throat> to something or someone. And so we cannot experience what we are unwilling to receive. We can't experience something that we're unwilling to receive. So first we open and there's this level of enthusiasm of welcoming. Oh, beloved, it's so good to see you. Come, let me embrace you. Let me give you a hug. Let me draw you close to me. Let me hold you. Let me nurture you. Let us um, experience this relationship, a greater relationship. So when we talk about embracing, when we talk about the question, what must we embrace from this perspective in visioning, we are really looking at what must I be receptive to that will bring me closer to the vision? What possibilities am I open to? What opportunities for growth do I welcome? What ideas do I invite into my consciousness? What changes am I willing to wrap my arms around, hold lovingly and nurture? What serves to transform my continual evolution? What are these things that, these ideas even, these concepts, these beliefs that I am, that spirit would have me know, that spirit would have me embrace, that spirit would have me welcome into my life, that will align me with the high idea of spirit as me, of spirit as my life, as spirit as our community. What am I being called to embrace? What am I being called to embrace? So I invite you now just to take a deep breath for a moment. And what are you enthusiastically willing to welcome into your life in this moment? And I'm not asking you to ask this of your head. I'm asking you to ask this of your heart, of that still small voice within. What is it that you are being called to embrace, being called to welcome and draw into your experience, to wrap your arms around. Good morning, John. Good morning, Lupe Marie. Go ahead and put that in the comments. What are you being invited to embrace in this moment? What are you being invited to embrace? And we'll just give you a moment here because I know that there's some lag time here. What are you being called to embrace? Earl, what are you being called to embrace? Amber, what are you being called to embrace? Dinah, what are you being called to embrace? Shawnee, Constance, what are you being called to embrace? Love, 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 Amber, yes, thank you. So the embracing is the opening. It is an opening in consciousness. It is a conscious preparation that it is an opening and being available. All of life's experience, beautiful Reverend Victoria, peace, Dinah, love, Constance, empowerment, great. Cynthia, joy, equanimity, beautiful. Life, Dorcel, absolutely, embrace it, right? All of life's experience, embracing life itself. Beautiful, so this is what we are being called to embrace. This is what we're called to welcome into our experience, my enoughness, beautiful, thank you, Jeannie, right? Beauty in all things, life, wisdom, Excellent. That this is what we are being called to embrace. This is what we are being called to 
bring closer to us and nurture a relationship with. Excellent. The next piece is embody, <clears throat> embodiment. So what must I embody? What must I embody is the question. So when we think of embracing as an opening in consciousness, then embodying is actually an idea that is a demonstration of consciousness. To embody something is to go beyond the mental and intellectual knowledge of something, and it's to go beyond the heartfelt understanding of something, and it is to actually embody it so fully that when we embody it so fully, we have assimilated it into our consciousness so much so we have assimilated it so much so that it actually manifests, it actually expresses itself through and as us. It becomes so instinctual that it is a knowing that we know that we know. It is that knowing, it's that embodiment that manifests, that it's that knowing that we know that we know that demonstrates or manifests in physical form. It is that level of faith. It is that deep, deep knowing that we have so internalized the beauty. We have so internalized the peace. We've so internalized the love. We've so internalized whatever it is that we are being called to embody that we are then the expression of it. It is moving through us. Remember that spirit works through us into this plane of existence. So when we have embodied something, we have so taken it and so assimilated it that it we become the living manifestation of it. So much that it's demonstrated in our lives, it's demonstrated in our community, it's demonstrated, it's outpictured, it's manifested, whatever word you want to use, that it is outpictured in our community, it's outpictured in our lives, that we are living it, we are experiencing it because we have so embodied it. So when we ask the question then, envisioning to bring ourselves into alignment with it, the question then is what must I embody for this vision to be fulfilled? We're really asking spirit, what must I know so deeply? What would you have me know? What would spirit have me know that I must know so deeply that it becomes causal, that it becomes first cause, if you will, that it becomes causal and takes form as me. What must I know so deeply in my life that it takes form as me? And in so doing, it aligns me with spirit's highest idea of itself as my life or spirit's highest idea of itself as our community or as our country or whatever it is that we're visioning for, what must I know so deeply? What am I being called to embody, to really know that I know that I know? And so I ask you that question now. I invite you to breathe in, receive, and ask what it is that we are being called to embody in this moment. What is it that you're called to embody? Peace, love. Oneness, inseparability. Gia is in every moment, all is Gia, right? All is God, God is all there is. <clears throat> Courage, bravery, strength. Mm, powerful. We're being in, called to embody. To know that we know that we know. Vicky, love, love, love. Vicky, I saw that there was a embracing abundance and joy as well earlier. Constance, faith, Dinah, willingness, being called to embody a willingness, an open receptivity, being a vessel of transparency for the divine. 
a vehicle, a vessel, the wisdom of spirit, freedom, the oneness, Bill. Thank you, Jeannie, the wisdom of spirit, the oneness. Yes. And so I invite you to think about where do these qualities, where do these things reside within your own physical being? These ideas of or these, uh, these things that are being called forth to be embodied, they already exist within you because you are inseparable from them, right? They already exist within you. So where within your physical being do they reside and feel into that? What is the sensation of that? What is the physical sensation of love? What is the physical sensation of patience? What is the physical sensation of the wisdom of spirit or of freedom, of willingness, of of love, of courage, of oneness. Where is the that feeling within your body? And feel into that. Where does it reside? Does it feel alive? And feel that. <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And so <clears throat> moving then from embodiment to become to becoming. So we ask the question, what must I become for this vision to be fulfilled through me or this vision to be fulfilled as me? So embracing and embodying are activities of conscious cultivation. Becoming, on the other hand, is an act of allowing. Let me say that again. Embracing and embodying are activities of consciousness cultivation, that we are cultivating our consciousness. We are opening up to receive. Then we are embodying. So this is cultivating our consciousness. Becoming, on the other hand, is an act of allowing. It's an act of surrender. It is allowing that which you already are to come forth from within you. It's allowing that which you already are to come forth from within you. When we look at the story in Matthew about Jesus walking on the water, the master teacher walking on the water, <clears throat> and the disciples are in a boat, and he's standing there and he's walking on the water, and he sees Peter, and Peter says, you know, he invites Peter to come to him, to come to him out on the water. Peter <clears throat> steps out of the boat, and he keeps his eyes fixed upon the truth, which is what um, the figure of Jesus represented. He keeps his eye focused solely on the truth, the truth of what he already is, the truth of who he already is. He keeps his eye focused there, and because he is being who he is, he is being his innate nature and keeping his eyes focused on his innate nature, on the truth of his very being, because he is being the truth of who he is, he is then able to come to Jesus out on the water. And so it is the same here with the vision, the high idea that spirit would have for us that <clears throat> When we be fully who we are, that when we be the divine, when we recognize that this is the very essence of our nature, the truth of our being, our wholeness, our perfection, our love, our equanimity, our abundance, our prosperity, everything is right there where we are. When we recognize our oneness, when we recognize our divinity, and we simply be that. We don't need to be anything else. There is nothing else for us to be. We simply be that. Then we can come to our vision. Because remember, we are not drawing the vision to us. We are not trying to pull the vision to us. Rather, the vision is actually pulling us to it. And so when we ask the question, what must I become for this vision to fully manifest, to fully 
express itself as me, we are really asking what truth within me? What is the high truth within me? Or the divine idea or the quality of the divine, the quality of God that I am resonating with in this moment, be it love, be it peace, be it harmony, be it joy, be it bliss, be it equanimity, poise, divine order, right action. What is it within me? What aspect of that truth or the whole truth must I simply bring my awareness to, allow to um, express as me, what must I be so that I may come to the vision? What must I be so that I may come to the vision? So that I may enter to the promised land, so that I may live my fullest life, so that I may express my highest potential. What must I be to come to this experience of beauty, of harmony, of love, of joy, of the high idea? And so here I see <clears throat> my heart must be open to all, available, the truth within me. Yes, 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 yes. So it is envisioning that when we catch the high idea, the high idea is already complete, accepting, yes, non-judgmental, still, open, beautiful. What is, when we open perfection all, that already is, absolutely, open, forgiving, yes. Beautiful. Be still. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So envisioning the, the vision already is, perfection already is, as Shani put in the chat there, or in the comments there, perfection already is, beauty already is, love already is, the high idea for our lives already is. It is our opportunity to attune ourselves to that by releasing and letting go, by embracing, embodying, and becoming that which we already are. And in so doing, we move forward into a greater experience of life, into the highest idea of our life. So I ask you this day, <clears throat> what are you willing to open to with open arms? What are you making yourself available to with open arms? So I invite you to think about that as we move forward this week. Hmm. Forgiving must become the truth. Yes, beautiful, 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 beautiful. So this week, earlier this week, <clears throat> once again, the country was rocked by violence this time in Atlanta, where a man attacked and killed eight people through gun violence, there is a, it is highlighting the yeah. racism and the misogyny that is still present in our country. Once again, this highlights. And so, in looking at this and in looking at this in terms of embracing, what are we 
called to embrace? What are we called to embody? What are we called to be? What are we called to become? When we look at something like this, we are to embrace one another. We are to embrace our oneness. We are to embody that fully, embody our wholeness fully. And we are to release any idea of separation, any idea of otherness that feeds hatred, that feeds this violence. We are to release that. And we are to simply be love, be wholeness. And in so doing, what are we doing as a community? What are we doing individually as we are lifting the consciousness? We are creating a space where this type of violence, this type of anger, this type of hatred cannot be, cannot exist. But it is up to each one of us to embrace, to, to release, to let go, to embrace, to embody, and to be so that we may all realize a vision of a world that works for everyone in all of creation in greater and more profound ways. So as we experience this collective tragedy, this collective trauma, let our consciousness transmute the pain, let our consciousness transmute the hatred, let our consciousness transmute the violence to love, to oneness, to experience each other as the siblings that we are, to transmute what has been to something greater, which is the fullest expression of love. That is our purpose, to be the presence of love. Let us do that together. And so let us come together in consciousness now. I recognize that there simply is just this one presence, this one life this one love that is all through all as all, forever expressing itself through us as us, forever expressing itself through and as all of creation, forever being, it simply just is. God is, the divine is, spirit is, the universe is. It is the isness and the allness and the fullness. It is all that there is. There is no other, there is no separation. There is nothing opposed to this one. So I know that there is only love. I know that there is only peace. I know that there is only harmony. I know that there is only oneness. And I know that I am inseparable from it. I am one with the one. It is the very who of who I am. It is the very truth of my being. And so I stand in the power. I stand with complete dominion in this oneness. And I know this oneness for one and all. I know that it is the truth of each one present here this day. I know that it is the truth of all of life. I know that it's the truth of all of creation, that there is only this one. And so I speak my word here and now for this beloved community, Riverside Center for Spiritual Living, recognizing that each person that is a member of our community, each person that is part of this community that considers this community home is one, a divine expression of love, of life itself. And I know that this is true of all of our beloveds and their beloveds and their beloveds and their beloveds. It is true of all. For where it is true, one place it must be true in all places, because God is everywhere present always. Love is present everywhere always. And so I speak a word of love for those who lost their physical life this week due to violence, due to separation. I speak a word of love for them, knowing and recognizing that each of them is embraced and held in the arms of love, enveloped in the love that they are, 
enveloped in the eternal life that they always have been. And for their families, I know too that right where they are, the power and the presence and the comfort of love is. I know that life is eternal, forever expressing. And I know that the pain that they are experiencing is a measure of the depth of their love. And so we honor the tears. We acknowledge the anger. We know that this too is an expression, an expression of love. And for those who continue to abide in separation, continue to abide in violence, continue to abide in hatred, we know too the truth of their being, that who they truly are is love made manifest. They have simply forgotten who they are. And so I speak with the authority of the divine. I speak with the dominion of the divine and call forth within each one of them now a healing, a repentance, a turning to and awakening to the truth of their very nature. It is repentance. It is a turning away. It is a turning away from. It is an awakening to the very nature of who each one is. And so I call forth within each one love. I call forth with each one peace. I call forth within each one harmony. I call forth with each one an awareness of an awakening to their oneness now. And I give thanks for this realization. I give thanks for the truth. I give thanks for the high idea of God manifesting, expressing itself in, through, and as us right here and right now. It is done. So I release this into the law, knowing it is absolutely so, it is absolutely complete, it is absolutely done. I simply let it be. And together we affirm, and so it is. Love.